Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, the story I'm about to share with you today, this is absolutely huge and it beyond a shadow of a doubt proves that we are racing toward the beast system spoken of in the book of Revelation chapter 13 and that AI, artificial intelligence, is going to play a huge role in this coming empire of the Antichrist. Thank you to all of you that had sent me this. I mean, there's many different sources reporting on this, but I had uh, someone send this to me just this morning. Uh, look, at the, look at the title of this. Lutheran Church in Germany has AI, artificial intelligence, deliver an actual sermon. You heard that correct, folks. Just in Germany, they had... Artificial intelligence, intelligence, excuse me, deliver a sermon at a church. And then it actually came out on Fox News just recently, titled, Chat GPT delivers sermon to packed German church. And the AI, the avatars, which I'm going to get to in a second, it actually told the congregants uh, not to fear death. Let me read some of this to you guys. A Lutheran church in Firth, Germany, experimented with artificial intelligence and had a chatbot deliver the sermon to the congregation of St. Paul's Church in Firth. According to the Associated Press, the chat GPT chatbot took an avatar of a bearded black man on a huge screen above the altar, then began preaching to more than 300 people. Actually, it was four different AI artificial intelligence avatars that took turns leading the service and reportedly drew laughter at times for their monotonous deadpan delivery. Chat GPT almost entirely generated the service and was 40 minutes long. It included music, prayers, and of course the sermon itself. The event was created using Chat GPT by Jonas Timmerlein, a theologian and philosopher, philosopher from the University of Vienna. I conceived this service, but actually I rather accompanied it because I would say about 98% of it comes from the machine, the 29-year-old scholar told the Associated Press. I told the artificial intelligence, we are at the church congress, you are a preacher. What would a church service look like, Simmerlin said. He also asked for psalms to be included as well as prayers and a blessing at the end. You end up with a pretty, pretty solid church service, Simmerlein said, sounding almost surprised by the success of his experiment. Like it or not, AI, artificial intelligence, is here and likely to stay. The world will get very interesting in the next few years as if it wasn't already. You heard that correct, folks. Again, a church in Germany just let AI, artificial intelligence, deliver an entire sermon, and it used four different avatars, artificial intelligence avatars, which took turns, again, leading the service. Uh, the first one was a bearded black man on a huge screen above the altar. Now, why is this absolutely huge? Well, what... When I saw that four different AI avatars were delivering the service, it immediately made me think of what's recorded in the book of Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. Go there. Go to the book of Revelation chapter 13. We're going to be reading verse 15 to verse 18. Now, the context here, after the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ and during the coming tribulation period, in Revelation chapter 13, we see it start off with the first beast rising out of the sea. This is referring to the future Antichrist who will not be revealed until after the rapture of the church. And then after that, we see another beast rise out of the sea. This is going to be the false prophet who's basically going to be the right-hand man of the Antichrist. But listen to this. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 to 18, speaking of the false prophet here, and he had power to give life until the image of the beast, that the image of the beast, beast should both speak and cause it that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So here we see again, giving life unto the image of the beast, 
that the image of the beast should both speak and cause it as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed? That sounds a lot like artificial intelligence. And when what you just saw there, again, the story I just shared is this church actually had four different AI avatars that were speaking, and they were avatars, they, they looked real, giving a message met with thunderous applause. And here we have again, and he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hands or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Or simply put, six, six, six. The rapture of the church of Jesus Christ has not occurred yet. The Antichrist has not been revealed yet. So the first beast has not risen out of the sea. Like we read in Revelation chapter 13, the first part. Which means the other beast that rises up, the false prophet, he has not risen yet. The whole point I am trying to make with this video is we see what is coming in Revelation chapter 13 during this B system. And here we have a church in Germany that just deliver, this had four different avatars, artificial intelligence avatars, deliver an entire sermon. And these avatars, they were speaking to the congregation. And in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 again, we see that the false prophet is going to have power to give life unto the image of the beast, whatever that's going to be. And that the image of the beast is going to both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The technology is all there, folks, and we are racing full speed toward the coming tribulation period. The tribulation is casting its shadow on the earth right here and right now. And if we know the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ needs to occur before the Antichrist is revealed and before the tribulation period begins... And we see the tribulation already casting its shadow on the earth. How close are we to the rapture? I would say a lot closer than people realize. All I can tell you is if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back and he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians Chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary again. The sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. 
Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.